Well, folks, welcome back to Major Diesel. As you can see, my old tractor's been sitting there for a while without the radiator and a bunch of engine parts taken off of it. And I had announced last fall on a bunch of videos I had showed what was wrong with the engine and I needed to uh, change a bunch of parts to change it over to make it into a diesel. And uh, so now I'm getting the opportunity to go back to my old farm where I had the the diesel that I used to run that that uh, threw a rod out of the side of the block. And uh, so I'm going to make a trip up there. So this next video we're going to do is uh, on uh, this tractor is to uh, to show you how I all the parts that I collect off the old tractor to bring home. I'm uh, going to ride with my son up to Fort St. John and I, out to the old farm and get my uh, parts. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have a couple of clips of uh, collecting parts for this tractor and hopefully we can uh, get this tractor going soon. I'm back up to Montney Mystery Farm where I used to farm and this is the tractor I used to use. And get a close look at that there. Yeah, we had a rod went out the side of the block on this tractor. Now I'm in the process of tearing it down. I'm going to take the head off and uh, alternator, some brackets. You see the stuff I put on the seat there already, some grill frames and things to put on the major that I'm working on back at home, Grassy Plains. And... Uh, yeah, we're going to get the injection pump off of this one. And uh, see, here's the piece of the oil pan that broke out. Kind of worthless. I already took the tappet cover off here. I've got some tools together here tearing this thing down. And uh, see on the diesel here, it had these two lines here and they ran from down here up to here and that was your governor it has a butterfly in the intake manifold there and uh, the throttle lever hooked directly on this is hooked direct to the throttle lever here and it hooked directly back here to the throttle and all it did was turn a butterfly inside the intake manifold. One side of the butterfly was open to ambient air. The other one was open to the suction from inside the engine. The balance between the two moves a diaphragm inside this pump. And that's what you call a vacuum governor. They were a very efficient governor system. Uh, Forts and Majors used them until 61 or 62 and the models from 62 to 65 have a mechanical governor they have a governor that uses flyweights and it mounts on this end of the pump and so the newer tractors don't have this big pot here for the vacuum bellows that's how you can uh, tell some of the models are different the heads fit the same for for either kind but the newer model doesn't have these holes drilled in the intake manifold for the butterfly so uh, I have my welder over here has the uh, Fordson 220 engine in it I'll show the difference on the butterfly in the manifold a little later here but Anyway, I had, I had been fixing up this tractor. I'd painted up a bunch of parts. It's been sitting here in the weeds now for five years, and the paint's starting to peel off that I had put on it. But, uh, um, yeah, we're going to collect what parts we can get. And I have a real doozy here. This was a rare item. In my parts collection here, I have the... Um, the original hydraulic valve system for a dual hydraulic system. 
Now these are still one-way hydraulic valves, but one of them runs a three-point hitch and the other one gives you a hydraulic valve. And usually you don't you can't find these valve banks that bolt in between and sandwich like that. So that's a prize I'm gonna take with me too. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, sad old girl. I'm going to need the front wheels and tires off of this one, too. And uh, some other parts. So I better get out taking parts off here. I'll catch you up a little later with the overview of the welder engine. Oh, so there. This is with the injection pump removed. We've got this little thing here, and I've got to clean the dirt out of it. Bolts with four bolts onto the side of the block. And this tells you that it was older than 62 if these four bolts in the block are here. Um, this bracket is different and there are two extra holes in the block that are drilled on the newer blocks and on the industrial blocks when they had the um, when they had the mechanical governor pump which had a longer shaft in between um, I think there may be some differences between 53 and 55 when they switched over to the longer rack injection pump to make it have more power for the power major. Now they claim the power major, it claims in the books, came out in 56, but there were 55s that used the injection pump like the power major, but didn't have the other features of the power major tractor. So you find that sometimes there are differences on the pump from year to, uh, from tractor to tractor, or and of course the industrial model engines and the engines that were in trucks had differences again. Um, the differences in the injection pump usually gave the injection pump capacity to make the engine run a higher speed. Um, this injection pump on this tractor was from a um, super major and it ran uh, 2000 rpm now with the mechanical governor they could run up to 2250 and maybe some of them didn't a little even faster yet i'm not sure but um the power major ran 1800 rpm and the original Ford's Major Diesel ran 1250. I think that's the, you can check me up, maybe I'm uh, um, reading too much into the specs, but I think that's what the specs said. And that's what gives you more power on a Power Major. Um, there's a possibility that in the different eras, ages of the, major between the power major and the super major they may have changed the gearing in the two speed if you can see the two speed boxes under here underneath behind the steering box that's the shifter tower two speed boxes down underneath where this uh, cross plug is in the side that's the cross shaft for the two speed box i don't know exactly if they had varying ranges in the two speed but i think they might have just because some of the tractors i've driven have seemed to be slightly different gearing uh, now then i have the injection pump off take a look right there on the side of the block this is the serial number here for this block and you notice it says 54. but the super major that uh, this injection pump was off of was a 59. Now that could have been made the difference in why it's through a connecting rod because we were 
able to rev the engine to a higher RPM. Uh, I don't know if there was differences in the bearing quality in the 51 to 55 models or not. But 51 to 55, most of them, I don't know about truck engines and I don't know about some of the special application engines, but I know most of the tractors that I've worked on that were 51 to 55 had the 1200 RPM top speed injection pump. And there is a slight difference in the seals on the um, sleeves in 55 and older and 55 and newer, which gave it a better quality and the sleeves would not come loose as bad. And it may have, there may have been some other quality issues inside the bearings and rods that were upgraded by 56 when the power major went into full production and they ran them at uh, 1800 RPM. And then the super major came along and they ran them at uh, 2000. Now, a super major, one of the biggest differences was the cross shaft that drives the bull gears here. This is a super major that's for parts here. The cross shaft that went in this hole that was supposed to drive the bull gears had disc brakes mounted right underneath the foot pedals. And these are the disc brake setups here. And uh, it was less trouble with the braking system. Now this, old, the older uh, majors from 51 to 59 had this style of brakes. This is a brake drum like a pickup brake drum. And there's this little shaft that runs out from that cross shaft and in inside the transmission out to the brake that is out past the fender here. But they had problems that they were controlled by a cable running around, just a short cable that ran around to the pedal and the cables would seize up. So anyway, just to give you a little bit of update I'm on my teardown here, you'll notice on the pictures I had of my gas engine one that right here instead of this coupler shaft here there's a little box on here for a governor and the throttle rod came running into the governor box right here and there was a hole through the engine block right here that went over to run the butterfly and the carburetor with the linkage and on the original diesel from 51 to 53 they also had this hole through the block here with the throttle rod connected up to the throttle lever here going right up here to this rod and then running across and running the vacuum governor and in 55 and newer models they changed to putting the the throttle rod at the back end of the block i suspect that possibly the throttle rods would wear out running through the block and wear through and it would leak water. That's probably why they changed that. Or they thought that the block was weakened by having a hole through it. So then they put the throttle rod running across the back of the motor up here. And then of course the newer ones, newer than 62, had the mechanical governor and the throttle rod came right up to the pump. Anyway, get back at tearing this thing apart here. Well, folks, I'm sorry to say that I was going through my video footage here. And while I got me some parts for this tractor, including an engine block, and few other things. The video footage I had of uh, showing the differences between the engines by looking at my welder engine got corrupted and I lost it. So we'll have to wait till I make another trip up north before I can show you the differences. Hopefully the next time I make a trip up north 
I can bring my welder along down here and we can sit it side by side with the tractor and look at the differences. So anyway, that's what things are doing today.